What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. We actually have some legitimate iPhone 6 news, not like those made up LeBron to Cleveland rumors. Don't expect revamped Macs anytime soon, and Apple has a job opening we can all qualify for. Well, almost all of us. So let's get to the show and new videos of factory line parts acquired by Sonny Dixon are showing us just how unbreakable and unscratchable the new Sapphire based iPhone 6 front panel is. Dixon is pretty kind with it with his Ben test, but then YouTube rock star Marquez Brownlee decides to get real. He starts scratching it with a scratch test with his keys, then takes it up a notch by trying to scratch it vigorously with a knife and even stabs it hard. There's still not a single blemish. He bends it even under more extreme conditions, but nada. Now these are the only two known Sapphire front panels that have leaked out. Sonny Dixon has a solid reputation of getting these parts in the past, and the clarity of this panel is really crystal clear. It also might confirm one unknown. This is a 4.7 inch panel. Rumors had said only the larger 5.5 inch iPhone 6 would get the Sapphire display, but this part would suggest otherwise. And something this light really can't be tested for corner drops or a legit shatter test, so we'll continue waiting, but the panel looks impressive. More parts this time, a hands-on with a rumored 4.7 inch rear shell for the iPhone 6, thanks to Moscow-based Feld and Volk. This is the first to showcase the cutout for the Apple logo, a slot for the SIM card tray, and two screws near the lightning port opening on the bottom. And the number one request everyone is asking for with the iPhone is better battery life. But according to Chinese media reports, we may be disappointed with a lower than expected battery capacity that will only give a slight boost compared to the iPhone 5S. Now that's due to the rumored focus on a slimmer design with an 1800 milliampere hours battery for the 4.7 inch phone and a 2500 milliampere hour battery for the 5.5 inch one. Now in comparison, Samsung's Galaxy S5 sports a 2800 milliampere hour battery for their 5.1 inch display. So would you guys rather have a slimmer iPhone or one that has way more battery life? We know software optimization is part of it, but when all is said and done, Samsung's full advertising assault, calling the iPhone users uh, wall huggers, might still be just as accurate when even the iPhone 6 comes out. Denied the freedom to enjoy even the most basic things, like grabbing a drink or sharing a laugh with your coworkers or sitting with someone you know. Says your new iPhone's coming out soon. Hope it has a better battery. I can tell you that I'm that person at the airport all the time, but I don't like hugging walls. I prefer hugging you. Oh, you're so warm. All right, also Apple seriously needs to step up their advertising game because they have been getting a bad Apple beat down by Sammy over the past two years. All right, I know a lot of us are looking to get a Mac with Intel's next gen Broadwell chipset, but Chinese site VRZone reports that production will not start until later in the year, pushing out Macs that would use those chips to mid-2015. It was expected to ramp up in July and August, but that's just not the case anymore. The report says new MacBook Airs and 13-inch MacBook Pros won't be ready to ship with Broadwell until February 2015, and the larger 15-inch MacBook Pro and iMacs won't be shipping until July 2015 at the earliest. Bottom line, Broadwell chips and Apple products won't appear until 2015, and that's been confirmed to CNET as well. All right, let's take a break and check out the app of the week. This one is for all the sports fans out there, and you've got to check out the 120 Sports app, which is more than just highlights. They present two-minute clips really made for the internet generation of the biggest stories and highlights. You can read articles that complement the videos and see related tweets as well. It's a real clean interface and all the major sport leagues like the NBA, MLB, NHL and more, except the NFL are behind it right now. They have live streams and a casual discussion. It's a one of a kind platform right now and it's definitely worth checking out for free. But you might not want to watch it if you want to stay away from stories about the Brazilian waxing. Ah! And that's the World Cup game I'm talking about. Here it is. All right, iOS 8 gets its third beta release. There's new iCloud Drive options and settings to store everything and access them through iOS, OS 10 Yosemite, Windows machines, or the web. There's a toggle to take advantage of the handoff feature, a revamped weather app with more details. There's a new time indicator before your recently deleted photos are permanently removed, and T-Mobile users can take advantage of Wi-Fi calling over the data network right now. 
Plus, Apple's Health app now has access to the iPhone's M7 motion coprocessor, so it can track your steps taken, and that data is displayed as far back as a week for you. There's also a new caffeine section to track how many Red Bulls you drink a day. Now, this is the first year I really haven't installed it on my primary device because I'm not willing to screw with some key apps that stopped working the past few years, and plenty of people have complained how it's not ready for prime time use because maybe it's a beta. On the other hand, I've always partitioned my hard drive to use the latest OS X developer preview, and Apple released the third iteration recently. Dark mode is officially available as an option for the OS, which is really cool. System preferences, mail and cloud preferences have received some interface tweaks, and there's an updated QuickTime icon. Now, a lot of you ask me when the beta version will be available to the public. Apple still says summer, but it hasn't dropped just yet. And finally, are you looking to work at Apple, but you don't think you have the right skills? Well, that might change after a recent job posting from Cupertino was posted for an iCup technician. And no, that is not for a new um, uh, wearable from the Big A. This is for a dedicated job to operate and maintain the barista coffee machines. Key qualifications include prior work with coffee machines, being able to speak clearly and listen attentively, and some computer skills. I only qualify for one of those. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's show. We're still working on an Ask Me Anything show, so send us your emails to the Apple Bite at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and you could be featured in our Apple Biters QA where, again, you can ask me anything. All right, thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you all next time for another bite of the Apple.